Hey everybody, Andy from Tennis Euphoria, bringing you some thoughts on the Yonex V-Core 98 Tour. So the Tour was released last year as a new addition to the V-Core line. It is the heaviest of the V-Cores that you can buy. Target specs are 315 grams, got a 63 RA now. Generally the RAs or stiffness ratings with the V-Cores have been reduced through this 7th edition across the line. And I think that's a good thing because V-Cores historically could be a little bit stiff on people's arms this of course as the heaviest edition is probably aimed at the more advanced player and many felt that this was a needed addition to the line it is quite different to the 305 98 which i'll discuss they obviously share technologies through the v-core line we have aero grooves that mean that the grommets don't drag through the air You've also got fin designs, which again reduce drag through the air. And since the SV, you've seen a real focus on increasing string movement, got things like silicone grommets at the top and bottom. Quality control check, it's always good with Yonex and no different here. I had two frames, one was totally on spec. The one that I was hitting with mainly was also very close to being on spec with a 327 swing weight strong with Luxon Slavage Black in the mains and Yonex Polytor Pro in the crosses. Now this is a spicy review for me because my game has changed a fair bit over the last two years. If I was to put myself through some of the processes that we use at Tennis Euphoria to match to rackets, then it would be a different story for me now compared to two years ago. And isometric frames and also pair drop frames would now be suited to me more so than they would have done two years ago where a rounded frame was much better when I was considering the commonality and frequency of my connection point in play. So that extra 7% claimed sweet spot I should benefit from more with the Yonex frame and with this swing weight circa 325 this was an exciting review for me because this certainly could be a racket that was in my wheelhouse. Let's start by comparing this to the 98305. It's amazing really how much 10 grams of weight in the manufacturing process can make in terms of difference to a frame. This is noticeably more stable than the 98305 and has got significantly more plow through. Um, if, I suppose the caveat being, you can handle the swing weight, which is relatively high at 325 to 330, most likely depending on strings. But I think it is um, so noticeable that it is a real positive change. And this, in my view, is a much better frame for your advanced player. In terms of feel, then that 63 RA is quite welcome. It's a softer feel than you'd get from something like the um, ESO 98 Tour, which I suppose would be a close comparison on spec. And the 2G NAM Flex that you find in the throat, you really feel in this frame. You have those silicon grommets at the top and bottom. And I guess the thing that I do notice with this 7th edition of all of the V-Cores is the wider area at 10 and 2, combined with their updated shaft designs, does lead to one significant factor and characteristic of the 7th edition frames which is very much the case with this tour and that is a high launch angle and a lot of that makes sense when it comes down to aerodynamics and the focus on that string movement the silicon grommets etc uh, that could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing for some players considering this frame i mean the launch angle is high if you're someone who has developed modern technique which is brushing up creating a lot of top spin with full swings then naturally that's a good thing if you're somebody who has an abbreviated swing or is hitting quite flat then i don't think you're going to get the benefit that the frame intends and the combination of the frame being uh, fast through the air and quite weighty can mean that a flat ball or a punch back ball can actually fly and of course, if you're swinging and not connecting optimally, the ball can also fly. So one thing I was um, noticing, if anything, in point play was that um, if things weren't quite right or I was pushed, then I could hit long uh, with this frame. And I think a lot of people would too. In terms of uh, picking the ball up on defense, that's another characteristic of the frame that I thought was something to watch. So the sweet spot is quite large. It is a weighty frame as well. 
and it is very fast through the air, which means that you can pick balls up on defence and it has the potential to hit a good slice. But the combination of the power that it's generating through the speed multiplied by the weight means that, again, the ball can fly. There is a marked difference with this frame from hitting a controlled ball, uh, hitting a ball that is relatively slow that you're attacking, compared to playing a defensive ball um, on the back foot. And the frame is actually excellent if you're attacking from anywhere, be that volley, be that shoot, short ball, be that an aggressive baseline stroke. But I think it is a frame that you really have to adjust to for your defensive play. And also you have to spend some time getting used to the speed through the air and the mass in order to hit an effective slice. In terms of a really positive aspect, once you've gelled with the frame, this really does feel like a frame that you can hit out with with confidence. You can generate huge racket head speed for the weight compared to some of its competitors and I guess that's thanks to that aerodynamics um, and, the and the movement within the string bed. I was finding that playing with Polytor Pro, a sort of lighter, uh, thinner gauge poly was, was benefiting me. Taking the swing weight down to sort of 324, 325 was noticeable rather than having it up at 330 with a full bed of Luxon Savage. And I think that that's something that you could play around with but when something's so aerodynamic as it is, small changes in swing weight is quite noticeable in frames like this. But once I got that right, this really was a, f a frame that I felt that I could play attacking tennis with and really hit my spots. Um, I did struggle a little bit when it came to match play, if I was honest. Um, and I think some of that comes down to that adjustment period around being defensive. As I say, it isn't a frame... Uh, that particularly suits shorter swings and when you're scooping a ball up and naturally when you're playing against very strong opponents you're going to find yourself digging balls out so that's certainly an adjustment point but overall the positives of that racket head speed and the ability to just hit through a ball uh, with great pace and power um, was very appealing indeed in terms of category that's a really interesting one with this frame if you look at the 98 square inch head and the 315 weight then it's hard to find a lot of direct competitors to this. There's two Technofiber frames that are 315. You have the TF40 315. Uh, this is um, probably a little bit firmer in feel, packing more punch and more spin. The TFI ISO 315 from Technofiber is actually a great frame. I think it'd be very hard to pick between this and that frame for me. For people who are looking between the two, it would come down to uh, their stroke mechanics and their contact point, I think. Uh, the T-Fight ISO is obviously a little bit more sort of box and circular than, than this isometric head shape and arguably might have a bit more control, but they have sort of similar characteristics and might have a similar target group. The other places to compare this to and categorize it with would be things like the heavier versions of the Aeros and the Pure Drives. But again, I think you're getting much more spin than you would from the pure drives uh, you're getting similar spin to an aero but i think much better control and feel so then you're also looking at things like the head extreme tour the bablat pure aero 98 and of course its younger brother the v core 98 305 but i think this frame stands head and shoulders above all three of those options because that extra weight at manufacturing point just gives you that extra plow uh, extra stability and I think it is a fantastic frame that will certainly make its way into the uh, demo racks at Tennis Euphoria's matching process because it's a, a super frame for an advanced and attacking player. Thanks for watching this one. More reviews to come. Also working on other content, as I mentioned in my last video. This is certainly a frame that will find its way into the shortlist for me. Uh, one frame actually that I've been hitting with a bit recently, which this is not too dissimilar to is actually the boom pro you hit a flatter ball with the boom pro for sure uh, but that's um, an overlooked frame at times thanks for watching please do subscribe to the channel it gives you a nice boost as a early doors uh, creator when you see people liking your content and uh, look forward to seeing the next one really appreciate you spending the time to watching the film